I have the honor and pleasure to share with you a new sample that you will be able to share now with your colleagues and customers to show them basically the power of what applications can they build with uh, Viva Connections, Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Graph Toolkit and Teams. So last Ignite, we thought with a group of folks you see on the screen about what scenario could we show, how could we illustrate what people could use Viva Connections for and Microsoft Graph, the power of Teams and everything that we have available, our toolings and SDKs to build an app that's relevant, but also makes a perfect use, excellent use of the abilities that we have available at Microsoft 365. So with that, we thought, you know what? Let's build something that will show the power of Viva Connections across devices. So both desktop and mobile, they would then also tap into the insights that we have available in Microsoft Graph and also use some of the UI features that we have exposed to us through Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Now, as that happens in demos, oftentimes, you know, that we want to show things, we want to, to illustrate things, but oftentimes we cut a corner because reasons because time because because we're not going to show everything anyway right so we want to have something that works and that kinds of illustrate the message but that not might not be in the best shape for us to be able to share that and for you to be able to show it to everyone else too and it's a shame really because we thought that that's a great scenario and if there's one thing that we hear from all of you time and again is that you want us and you need more samples to basically whenever you talk to customers and colleagues that you can inspire them too, right? That you can also show them what's possible on Microsoft 365, what apps you can build, how you can extend it to your specific needs to make it your own. So with that, we kind of regroup them and say, you know what? We need to um, update this sample, polish it, make it so, so that there is guidance, there is docs, there are step-by-step -steps, uh, guidance to for you to be able to run it on your own tenant, your own environment, for you to be able to pull the code, adapt it to your needs, and use it in your own engagement, show it to customers, basically to be able to kind of mimic some of that experience that you've seen us do at Ignite last year, but then do it within your own environment, within your own engagements. So with that, over the past few weeks, we worked together with Anoop, who is one of our MVPs and partners, to actually finish what we would start and bring it really to the state where it's something that we can be proud of and that it's something that will also work for you. So with that, I'll give it on to Anoop, who will walk you through the whole app, how it's built, how it works, will show it in action, and I also hope he will also show some code. Anoop. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Waldek, for that. Right. Uh, so this part of the presentation I have divided into three parts. Um, in the first part, uh, we will see the uh, the solution in action. Uh, so we will uh, log into the uh, to the Viva Connections dashboard as two users, requester and a manager, and see uh, how how the solution works. And then in the second part, uh, we'll have a look at the core. Uh, the important bits. Uh, and then uh, in the final part, uh, which is a small part, we'll just have a, a recap and uh, look at the resources. Right. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just open a couple of windows. So uh, on the screen, uh, uh, what you are seeing is uh, towards the left. Um, I have opened the dashboard uh, as, as a user called Rachel, uh, and the window is in red, and uh, Rachel is a requester, so R, red, Rachel, requester. And uh, on the right side, uh, I have opened uh, the same dashboard page as Megan. Uh, so you, we are seeing some extra content uh, in the dashboard because, uh, you know, we we have added an adapter card uh, which is shared with uh, with certain users only uh, so on the right side i've opened the same dashboard page as megan uh, who is uh, rachel's manager and the window color uh, is in mango yellow so <laughs> so m megan mango yellow manager right uh, so with that context setup uh, the the idea is rachel will will raise a well-being request because she wants to uh, take a well-being day uh, and then that request uh, will be actioned as in approved or rejected by by megan okay 
So let's start with that. Uh, so Rachel opens the dashboard and uh, she sees the well-being card, uh, clicks on schedule, uh, and then it says she has five more well-being days. Uh, so th that's good for her. So she decides to take one well-being day. So let's say she decides to take that on 15th. Uh, and then she uh, 15th of April, and then she adds a comment saying, uh, I need a day off. Uh, and then schedules that. And then uh, now the number of well being days for her are reduced from five to four. Now on the right side, uh, if I just go ahead and refresh uh, this uh, as Megan. Uh, so Megan is not interested in this card, which is uh, uh, you know, she doesn't want to schedule a well-being request. She wants to view the well-being requests uh, that that were uh, that were made by by members in her team. Uh, so she she opens up this card uh, wherein it says she has three uh, pending well-being requests. So she clicks on that and she sees that uh, uh, you know some members in her team have made uh, well-being requests. Uh, one of them is uh, this team member some random team member and then uh, we've got uh, the the well-being request that uh, Rachel had just um, submitted and now with that uh, uh, now Megan wants to approve this request um, or rather view this request first and then then decide what to do with it so she goes ahead and clicks on the uh, view button and that takes her to a team's personal app now I won't open this in the uh, Teams app, but I'll just use the web uh, version instead. And uh, it opens that same request in the personal app with more details. So uh, let's let's have a quick look as to what uh, details these are. So firstly, on the on the right side over here, you can see who has raised the request, uh, for when uh, was the request needed, and what are the comments. Uh, and then uh, on the right side over here, sorry, not that one. Uh, yeah, that one on right side over here, um, she can see uh, the calendar of, of the team. So basically uh, what is happening here is uh, she can see uh, the well-being day is requested on the 15th and there are, uh, you know, uh, two other events uh, before the 15th and then uh, some other events after the 15th. So basically uh, she can see that Rachel has requested a well-being day on 15th and there are events happening before uh, the well-being day and after the well-being day, but nothing on the day uh, that Rachel has requested. So with that, uh, you know, with that in mind, Megan is happy uh, to approve this request. So what she does is uh, she comes uh, in the left corner over here, just adds a coming, comment saying uh, all OK. Uh, and then while doing that, she can also uh, select a file to attach. So maybe there are some guidelines uh, with the well-being. Uh, so she selects the uh, well-being document, guidelines document, and then approves uh, the request. So now the well-being request is approved. Uh, Rachel can go ahead and take that day off. So if I just go back uh, in the Teams app and just uh, refresh this, uh, we can see that the request has been approved. And if needed, now Megan can action uh, the, the other well-being requests that were submitted by her team members. So uh, th that's, the, that's the demo. Now let's have a look at the, at the code. Okay. So Let's have a look at the basic elements involved uh, uh, as a recap before we jump into the code. Now I'll, I'll try to go through this a bit quickly because uh, considering the time. So firstly, we have got the home site, which is the Viva Connections uh, home site. In that we've got a dashboard and we've got a SharePoint list, which is called as the well-being list, uh, which is the source for all the requests that that, that get created. And then the second element we've got is the is the teams uh, in in which we have the well-being personal app, and uh, uh, that's what we saw a few minutes back. So the dashboard uh, uh, it gets data from well-being list and uh, adds uh, data into the well-being list, and same is the case with uh, with teams. Uh, so it gets the data from well-being list in order to show the well-being request, and also uh, when a request is approved or rejected, it updates. Uh, that particular item in the well-being list. Uh, and then the final thing is uh, we saw some events uh, that appeared uh, in the Teams app for that, uh, you know, uh, the way it works is uh, over here, I've created a team called as marketing team, 
uh, in the background that went and, and created a group. Now that group has a calendar. Uh, I've added some events in that calendar, and those were the events that we were seeing uh, in the Teams app. Right. Um, so uh, now uh, let's look at the first card, uh, first adaptive card, which is uh, the adaptive card that was adaptive card extension that was used by Rachel in order to create a request. So uh, Rachel opens the uh, dashboard uh, and then uh, she she sees that card and then that card what it does is on in it uh, on when when the card loads uh, it goes ahead and queries the well-being request uh, well-being list in order to get the requests that were created by Rachel um, and then it receives some data and says that uh, Rachel has uh, you know how many ever well-being days uh, remaining. And then once uh, with that, Rachel uh, clicks on schedule uh, that goes ahead and, and opens this quick view wherein Rachel can select a day when she wants to raise a well-being request and add some comments and clicks on schedule. When she clicks on schedule, uh, we write the data back to the SharePoint list. So uh, this is like uh, pretty much straightforward operations. Read from the SharePoint list on init and then write to the SharePoint list uh, on, on scheduling the request. So uh, let's take a look at the code. Uh, so uh, all this code is available on GitHub. Uh, so this sample contains uh, two adaptive cards and one SharePoint framework web part, which is um, uh, the team's personal app. So firstly, we've got the reminder is, uh, and then uh, uh, we've got the rem uh, well-being reminder adaptive card extension .ts file. So in the on init method, uh, what we do is we call this method called as get current users well-being request, uh, and all we do here is from the well-being list, um, uh, give me all those items uh, where the status is requested for the current user. So we use SharePoint REST API in order to get all those requests of the current user where the status is requested. Uh, once we have that data, we need to show show that data. Uh, we, we do that using a card view. Now, if you want to see what those uh, different types of views are, there are a lot of videos uh, provided by the PNP community uh, on, on basics of adaptive card extensions. Right, one of the views is the card view. Now, in the card view, what we do is uh, now that we've got uh, the requests for the current user, we just show, uh, you know, we just do some computation and tell them that how many of our requests they have. And uh, uh, in this case, you know, Rachel has four more well being days. Right. And then uh, on, on click of schedule, uh, what we do is uh, we open this, um, uh, this, uh, you know, the quick view, uh, which is, uh, which can be, uh, you know, created using a JSON and it'll have a TypeScript file uh, which runs the code. Uh, and then in the JSON, uh, all we are doing is just showing all these different controls, the date control, the comment control, and the, the schedule button. And then when we click on the schedule button, what happens is uh, we open, uh, you know, in the .ts file, uh, we have the on action method in that uh, what we do is we just create an item in the SharePoint list. So basically, uh, um, you know, we we call the post method on the well-being list, and then uh, uh, add the employee ID, the date, uh, and the comments. Right. So uh, that was uh, Rachel using the uh, well-being, uh, 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 you know, request card in order to make a request. Uh, the next one is actioning a request. Now this is done by Megan. Uh, I'll go through this uh, quickly. So what we do here is uh, we uh, you know, go ahead and get the number of uh, well-being requests that are pending. Uh, and then once Megan clicks view, uh, we show the pending request. Uh, and then once uh, once Megan clicks the view button on the request, uh, we go ahead and open the Teams app and uh, show the request itself. Uh, again, uh, in the ACE, uh, uh, we've got the on init method. Uh, in that method, uh, the first thing we do is using SharePoint REST API, uh, we go ahead and uh, get all those items from the well-being list where the status is requested, and we 
we are getting all the requests. We are not concerned about uh, the current user or anything. Uh, so once we have all the requests, what we do is we just map all the requests into a, a, a custom object. And one particular uh, thing over here, here is for each request, we compose a Teams URL. Now, this is nothing but uh, teams.microsoft.com slash entity. Uh, and then uh, we paste the ID of the Teams app. Uh, all this ID uh, will be part of the configuration, which is explained in detail in the, uh, you know, in the readme file of the repository. Uh, so we compose a Teams URL for that particular request. In the end, we just uh, put the ID of the particular request because that's uh, that will be needed in the Teams app. Right, uh, and then uh, in the card view, what we do is uh, we just uh, show to Megan how many of our requests uh, are pending. Uh, and then once Megan clicks view, uh, we go ahead and open the quick view, uh, which again is a JSON with all the different controls. Uh, so uh, we've got the photo of the of the requester uh, and the title of the request uh, and the view button. So when when the view button is clicked, uh, it is nothing but uh, uh, we ask uh, them to open the URL. Uh, so the it re redirect the Megan to a and to the Teams app, and then in the Teams app, Megan sees the request. And with respect to the Teams app, uh, it's nothing but an SPFX web part. Uh, firstly, we get the particular request based on the ID that was passed, and then uh, we have a component in which uh, we go ahead and get the particular request and display the request using different components. In this case, we are using the MGT uh, person control and uh, you know the uh, fluent UI controls in order to display uh, you know the requester's details. Uh, and then we have got a review form, a, a custom component that we have built, uh, which shows these approve and reject buttons and a comment box. And finally, we've got the agenda. Uh, MGT control, which shows uh, all the uh, you know uh, previous events and the and the future events. Uh, we just use Graph API in order to get those events, and then uh, we we display them. So in summary, two adaptive cards and one SharePoint framework web part. All the details are present in the repository, and these are all the links. Thank you very much, uh, Vesa. Back to you. And really, really cool stuff. And, I, and, and the key is, of course, getting interested and then spending time on having a look on the code and understanding how it works. But really, really cool stuff and, and showing a lot of the cool technologies across Microsoft Teams and Graph and Viva and so on. So really, really awesome stuff. Mm -hmm.